Hello, my name is Matthew. The car I want to introduce to you is the Nissan Tida. To be honest, before I picked this car up at the airport, I had never heard of it before. Most likely because I'm from the UK and we didn't have many there. The Nissan Tida was manufactured for 8 years from 2004. The code name for this model Tida is the C11. It came in a 4 door saloon and a 5 door hatchback. In North America, the Tida was known as the Nissan Versa. South Americans called it the Dodge Trezzo. And Asia called the saloon version the Nissan Latio. The American version, the Versa, was also once the cheapest car in America until another manufacturer undercut the price by $20. Anyway, enough about those. The car I have brought to show you on this video is the Nissan Tida from 2011 with the 1.6 engine, code name HR60DE. Let me show you around the outside of this car. Okay, so this car here is finished in the lovely colour Arctic White, which in my opinion is one of the best colours that suit this vehicle. The headlights are massive, which is great for being seen and for seeing others. It also looks in keeping with the, the glossy black grille surrounded by the chrome finish. Moving on down, you notice this car has colour-coded bumpers. This particular one does not have the fog lights. But as you can see, it has the black trim blanking plates. The alloys in this car are 15 inch and they are wrapped in 195-65 R15 tyres, which hide the front disc brakes. They handle the braking on the Cypress Mountains with ease. As you can see, the side indicators are quite big and they're clear. Behind the ring mirrors is quite a useful little triangle cutout which reduces the blind spot when you are in the driver's seat. Um, these are the two powerful windscreen washers. The colour coded ring mirrors on this vehicle are quite large and I am relieved that they are electric. This car here has tinted windows which is ideal um, for the type of climate it's in. And the colour-coded door handles remind me of some of the Volkswagen range. Heading down once more, the side skirts are also colour-coded. The rear brakes are also disc. Some of the older Tidas had the drum brakes. The front suspension on these cars are the independent strut type, while the rear setup is a torsion beam. The boot on the saloons look tiny on the outside, but don't let that fool you. On the inside, it's massive. Heading round to the back of the vehicle. The tail lights are massive, like everything else in this little car. A design feature is the large chrome strip which tries to make the vehicle look more upmarket. I'll let you have your own opinion on this. Also, the chrome strip houses the button to release the boot, plus the number plate lights. In the centre of the rear bumper, you will find the rear fog light. Just behind the rear heated window, you have a third brake light. And on the roof, there's the car's aerial. Under the dashboard, you will find the lever to open this fuel flap. So, let's have a look inside the car. Here is the key. No special start stop button. We just have a normal key with lock and unlock. Let's unlock her and have a look. So let's start her up. 
you have all the various warning lights. When the cart is cold, you have the blue temperature light up. So basically, don't drive her hard. Okay. So, looking at the center console, we have storage. Ideal for your CD collection or your mobile phone. We have a stereo, which is connected to four speakers. It's um, it has travel enhancement and news. <coughs> Sorry, FM and AM radio, CD player, auxiliary, and this specific model has Bluetooth, which connects to your phone and turns your car into basically a hands-free kit. Okay, this is the mute button, this is for the CD, this is the eject button. The menu button for options for the telephone or other various settings. Here is the power switch. This is for selecting track or seeking your radio station. This is for answering the phone or picking the phone up. This one here is to go back on the menu or to put the phone down. This one here is the phone book for your telephone. These here, these six buttons here, are for the six preset radio stations. So basically the memory. Um, this here, this button here, is for adjusting the sound of the car, the sound of the stereo. So if you like bass, stick up the bass. It does the settings from fade, left to right, front to back, and I think that's it for the stereo. Um, this one here shuffles the songs or repeats the same track. This is the auxiliary port, so you connect your phone to it, you can play your music. And this one here is for fine tuning the radio station or to search a specific part of the song you like. Um, okay, so as you can see, there are quite a lot of air vents in this car. And um, you can open and close them. So there's one, two, three, four, get some here. And you have some in the centre which can be open and closed too. Okay, and um, there you have the airbag for the passenger, and here you have the airbag for the driver. Okay, also you have air vents underneath the dashboard to keep your feet warm in the winter. Okay, here is the hazard switch. Here is a little light cluster, some, well, some sort of symbols for the warnings of the car. So, this one here tells you if the passenger is in the seat and hasn't got the seat bit on. So if I put some weight on the seat, as you can see, the light comes on. Take your hand off, it goes off. This is to let you know the central locking is engaged. So if I put the central locking on, the light comes on. This bag here is to let you know if the airbag is switched off. Right. So, here are the zones for the heating and cooling system. Here is the recycled or recirculated air, the four speed fan, the um, the heating and cooling switch and here is the switch for the rear window and here is the air conditioning. Right, this car here is fitted with the four speed automatic transmission which some people love some people don't like but I quite like automatic so it suits me right to shift this car into a gear you put your foot on the brake as you do with all other automatics and basically push the button in and select the gear you want okay um, this little button here, so you can see it, is the overdrive. And this little button here is a safety override. So, if your battery is flat, and obviously, with the bike, if your battery is flat, 
you obviously have no power in the car so your foot on the brake and the key ignition too will make no difference so what you do is you push this in with a pen and then you can adjust you can select your gear right behind the gear stick gear shifter you have the um, some cup holders or some storage um, down here you have the handbrake which is okay uh, it's quite, actually it's pretty good in this specific car down here you have the power source so it's a 12 volt um, there you go it's um, ideal for your set now it's made for your set really because I can't actually see if this car has an ashtray, I've looked but can't find one. So for this car, it's my set nav charger. Um, here you have some more storage, more cup holders. Um, uh -huh. This lever here is for adjusting the height. So pump, pull it up. It's a bit flimsy on this car. Pull it up to adjust the height to go upwards, and push it down to go downwards. I like having it up. <laughs> and this one here is for adjusting the recline and decline of the seat seat belt okay so power steering it feels quite electronic it's very light um, on the steering wheel we have obviously got the horn and we have the volume controls this is for selecting the track or the radio station Telephone controls to pick up the phone or to hang it up and source so you can select it from FM and AM CD auxiliary. Okay, on the dash we have your rev counter, your speedometer, your fuel gauge, and your miles. That mile screen or kilometer screen, shall I say, also tells you um, the oil level, tells you if the oil is okay when you start it up. Um, oh, these cars also have um, adjustment for the steering wheel, so there's a little lever down here, we'll find it, uh -huh. pull it down, you can adjust the, the height, and I don't think you can do the reach on this one, no, nah, just the height, push it back up to look it up, okay, so, So on the driver's door, you have um, your door handle, a door grab, your central locking, so to unlock, so to, to lock or unlock. This one here cuts the powers off to your other windows, I think it's the rear windows, the rear windows. Um, so if your kids are being annoying in the back and keep opening and closing the window, you just push it and it cuts the power off. Um, the driver's power switch is automatic, so you push it quickly once and the window goes down. Lift it up and it continues to go up by itself. The other um, switches are all manual. You can adjust them more finely, so as soon as you let go it stops. Um, okay, down here we have... Um, the adjustments for the electric mirrors up, down, left, right, and this one here, just the left mirror, and you push it to the right, just the right mirror. This little button here, see it's got zero, one, two, three. This um, is to adjust the aim of the beam of the light. So if you have a lot of weight in the back of your car, your front wheel, your your headlights will shine up in everybody's face and they'll start flashing you and getting annoyed so what you do is you adjust this to counteract so if you load stuff in the back you adjust it to number three or number two and it shines lower to the ground okay down here you have your fuel cap opener or fuel flap on this car and you have your bonnet release cable and um, speaker there 
Um, oh, up here you have um, your lights, just push them once to turn on and off. Here is your sunglasses holder. The um, the grab handles on these are soft closings, no loud fuds, which is quite nice. The mirrors on these cars are quite big, and also there's a um, a cutout in the A pillar, or just behind. Well, there's a cutout near the A pillar to allow you to see what's behind the mirrors, which is great because that would have been a large blind spot. Okay, let's have a look in the rear. Okay, as you can see, right, I am six foot tall, that's why I've chosen to sit behind my seat in this car. And as you can see, there's lots of leg room for me. Ideal. Okay, in the back, there's not much in the back for um, passengers. Uh, here you have the door handles, door grabs, electric window switch. In the centre you have three full seat belts. And also you have anchorage points for the children's safety seats. And also up here you have some anchors too. Um, up here you have um, the settings for the light for the car so you can have it so when the doors open it turns itself on and when you close it it goes off. It dims quite nicely. Um, you can turn it off or you can leave it on but if you're like me you probably forget and you have a flat battery which isn't good. Okay. Oh this car here must have airbags in the side because it has a little badge here. So an airbag. And it's also zipped. So I'm not 100% sure on that but I just thought I'd point it out. Here's the view from the rear seats. Okay, let's go to the passenger side. So we're in beautiful Cyprus. I love it here. Okay. So, sorry about that. <laughs> so, in the passenger side, you ready? Here's the dashboard view. Okay. The um, difference between the driver's seat and the passenger seat is the driver's seat you can adjust the height, and in the passenger seat you cannot adjust the height. Um, the glove box in this car is quite big. Apparently, this car was aimed at girls, and this time wanted to make a glove box big enough to fit a handbag in, and it looks like you can. I don't have a handbag to show you, but there you go. There are quite a lot of storage pockets in this car. Down there, you can fit a big bottle of water. Um, same with the back, not as big though. Oh yeah, the um, passenger mirror, the if you um, sun blind, sun visor, shall I say, has um, has a vanity mirror. While the poor driver, who is most likely to be the girl that this car was aimed at, has nothing. So but they forgot the main point there. Okay. That's all I can think of in the interior. So it has power steering, airbags, CD system, good storage. The seats are quite soft and they're quite comfortable. Um, oh yes, I shall show you how to do the lights. Okay, I'll do it on a separate little clip. Just to show you it working from the outside at the same time. While leaving the car, I've noticed this little locking system here. 
this little key slot allows you to turn on and off the airbags so if you have a baby in the front on the front seats with their little um, baby thing uh, what's it called anyway it turns off and saves you ex it saves the airbag going off in the accident which could potentially harm your baby in their little car seat bed thing I don't know <laughs> So, this is the um, left indicator, which also works the lights of the car. So, but at the moment the lights are turned off, now it is side lights, low beams, and pull it backwards to flash somebody, and push forward put on the high beams and this one here is basically um, fog lights push it once I twist it once to turn on the fog lights and turn it again to turn them off this is the wiper stalk okay so to clean the windscreen and spray it you just pull back once to do an individual wipe you just push up and let go. To do um, to use the wipers with a pause between each wipe you just push down one click. This swivel controls the amount of time for each pause. Another click down basically has slow wiping function and the one at the very bottom is the quickest windscreen wiper setting. This Nissan Tita has folded rear seats. Okay, they fold at a ratio of 60 40. To fold them down, you just put your finger in the slot, lift it up, and pull it down. And to the other side, okay, the other slot, put it in, lift it up, and just pull down. As you can see, the seats are folded, but they are not. It's not a flat loading bay. To um, put them back, you just lift up the seats. And there you go. They've all folded back together. So now, I will show you in the boot. Key in there, and turn to the right, and it goes up in the air. Okay, so. As you can see, the boot is quite big for the size of the car. Okay, you can fit me in there quite easy, and I'm quite a, a fat lad. Okay, here's the third brake light. Okay, oh, down underneath the carpet, we have a spare wheel. You have the jack. Let's have a look under the bonnet. So open the bonnet, you pull this little lever here, and where the badge is, you can see a little cutout groove here. Here, sorry, it's very hard to do with one hand. Try and feel it. Uh -huh. There's a little lever you push to the left, and you just pull up. Let's talk about the engine. The Nissan Tida had a 1.5, a 1.6 and a 1.8 dual overhead cam petrol engine. It also came with a 1.5 diesel. This engine in this car is a HR16DE. The 16 being it's a 1600cc or 1.6. This engine has 110 horsepower and will take this Tida to 0 to 60 in 11.1 seconds. Bear in mind this 
transmission is automatic. Thank you for watching my first ever video. I really enjoyed making it. If you would like to see any more, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Take care.